And now we are joined by Chris, the problem Duncan, who joins me ahead of his fight against Manuel G G Gasher. Not sure how he says his name, to be quite honest with you. But uh, Chris, I heard your fight got postponed, post postponed till 28th. Uh, how true is this? And was it a problem on your end or your opponent's end? Yeah, I think it's just a... Uh... Uh, to do with the visa and stuff like that. Um, obviously, with COVID and stuff like that, everyone's been held back by, you know, like, like a lot, a lot of time. So uh, I think just through the safety of it all, the UFC pushed it for a week further down the line. And it's not long until you get your opportunity now to get into the UFC. It's been a long time since your last fight. I, I know it's been um, quite frustrating for you. Is that the reason why this has happened? Is the Dana White Contender Series opportunity has come for you? Is that the reason why you left belt or was was having to wait for a fight? Um, to be totally honest with you, man, it's just uh, it's just the way this happened. Um, it was never planned. It was never. It was. It's just the thing with COVID is you know the, uh, the the uncertainty of everything. You know, you just got to take things as they come. So, um, I I just stole this opportunity when it when it arose when my manager presented it to me and in the belt hall you were putting quite a quite a big star for them in europe at least was was it was it a case of no one kind of wanting to step up to fight you in, in terms of what how long you went without having a fight it was just it was covid man it's just covid 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 you know it, 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 i couldn't get fights i couldn't I couldn't, the belt or couldn't get over to the UK uh, because of the travel restrictions and the quarantines and, and stuff like that, you know. So um, uh, now that I'll be getting my visa appointment on Wednesday, uh, these problems will not will not be a, be any more. <laughs> and just looking back at your time in belt, so it was a success for you. How would you kind of describe your time there looking back at it with the three fights you had? Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, all the guys at Beltor and all the all the team really looked after me, and you know, um, I got a letter obviously from Beltor to say that they wished me all the best with my endeavours, and um, if they if the opportunity ever arises that they would welcome me back with open and arms. So, um, I was very fortunate with uh, with that. You know, that the, the, they want me back because obviously they know that that I'm that I'm an entertainer. And I'm out there to to put on a, a show for everybody. I'm just looking at the UFC's lightweight division. Is it exciting for you because of the, the lightweight division is full of stars and big names? Is that exciting for you compared to how the Bell Tours lightweight division in, in a sense? Yeah, definitely. The UFC is the pinnacle of the sport, isn't it? It's like the, the, the cream of the crop, you know? So I'm um, just very excited to be associated with such a, an amazing company and um, looking forward to the future. And just quickly, I'm sure you watched the UFC on the weekend. What did you make of uh, Paddy the Baddy Pimblet? Because, you know, a big star coming out of the UK now, he's kind of grown a lot since the weekend. What did you make of his debut, hit him as a fighter and kind of his personality? Yeah, Paddy's Paddy, isn't he? You know, everybody's going to be talking about him just now. I don't know they want to give him as... Uh, uh, you know, because everybody's calling him out and tagging him and shit. You know, it's he's, he's probably sick to the back teeth of hearing people like want to call him out. So, um, yeah, I'm not not too fussed on him. You know, maybe our paths will cross in the future. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. And what's it been like ha having to wait for this kind of opportunity? Because it's been set in stone for a while now, your Dana White Contender Series, and now with it being postponed for another week, what's the wait like for you knowing that opportunity is coming, but you're having to wait and wait and wait? Um, my girlfriend hit it on the head the other day, you know, great things come in time, you know, so um, uh, it's good for me as well, you know, it gave me an extra week to, to kind of relax on my diet a little bit and have a little bit extra food, which is always a bonus. Um, and I'm um, just really looking forward to, you know, the, the last three, two weeks, you know, it becomes becomes quite grueling, especially with the diet being low and the intensity goes up just a little bit. And then come maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, um, we start to kind of have a, like a couple of deloads and uh, move about, get sweat on. So 
Um, I'm looking forward to the process next week, you know, um, finishing off the week hard and then obviously the week after that getting the deal load and re- uh, letting my nervous system rest back up again. And what's it been like kind of training, but not having a, a, a set date in, 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 in plan for when you were fighting next, you know, looking at the past year for you? Was it difficult kind of keeping the consistent training without not having a, a date for when you return to fighting? Not really, no. I, I made this my life. I have given myself no other choice to be good at this sport. So um, I have no backup plan. So um, it's, it's very important. I just keep chipping away and working my way up that ladder, getting better as a person, getting better as a fighter, getting better as, well, a coach. And maybe a lot of guys look up to me in the, the local gym back home. So it's very important that I, I, I make sure that they use me as a role model and make sure they see my work ethic and how much work I put in. And, you know, all of these things uh, come tenfold when it comes to the fight. You know, it's it's important to be be a model for the younger generation and help out and stuff like that. So it's important to keep in shape. And um, I like to keep in shape as well, you know, especially with everything going on in the world. You know, everybody's worried about catching the cold and catching COVID. You know, it's very important to keep your immune system and your health in tip-top condition. And what's the schedule like for you at the moment? Uh, do you know what, when, when you're going to be flying out to Vegas and what's going to be happening when you're out there in terms of when your <clears throat> visa is solid? I think I fly out on the, the 20th um, and I'll be there for like eight eight days and then I'll fight on the 28th and then fly home on the 29th and just get back and eat some shit food. <laughs> and your opponent, Manuel, I'm, I'm not going to try and butcher his last name because I've Honestly, it never seems such a quite hard name to, and I've Googled it, nothing in terms of how to pronounce it. So um, yeah. what do you make of him as an opponent? A lot of similarities in a way, you know, you're both 7-0 and and you're both European prospects. What, what do you make of him as an opponent? Um, he's a tricky opponent to prepare for. Not many many fighters have a style like his, um, but um, the, the record that he has is kind of, I feel he's a little bit of a padded record. Um, seems to be a kind of one trick pony, uh, a, lot, a lot of fancy kicks, which can be dangerous, obviously. And every every fighter and every person that you come against will have their goods and their bad points. But, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a better all rounder, um, and uh, you know, that the guy's gonna have been for a short night come 28th. And obviously, you finished every fight in your professional career so far. What do you think are the chances this even makes it to decision at all? 110% I'll be knocking this guy out. And do you think that is what's required to get the UFC contract, is for you to knock him out? Um, no. I, uh, obviously it would help, but um, I, I just need to focus on myself and do what I've been doing for the last seven fights because... You know, I can't be lucky seven times. So I just need to make sure I'm I'm doing what I do best and stay focused and don't worry about the finish too much because the finish will come because it's in my nature, it's in my in my blood, you know, it's in my in my soul. So I'm just ready to go out there and put on a show and show these guys that I'm I'm, I'm worth that UFC banner, you know. And do you think you offer Dana White a kind of um you unique selling point for you as yourself as a Scottish fighter, you know, your personality and coming from Bellator as well, you know, you're different to maybe some of the other fighters on the contender series. Yeah, 100%. You know, he's, he's looking for a personality. He's looking for for somebody that uh, is looking to put on a show. Um, and, I, and I'm going to make sure he knows that I'm I'm ready to put my body on the line to to entertain him. And I've said it before, and, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say it again, is... I'm going to go over there and he's wanting me to be a part of his business and I'm going to be, you know, employee of the month. And was the UFC always the goal for you, despite, you know, beginning in Bellator and, and t- taking that kind of venture, different to what many other European fighters might have done? Yeah, definitely, man. You know, like the UFC is the pinnacle of the sport. It's been there about the longest, you know, and all the top guys have been there, you know, UFC Hall of Famers and stuff like that. So, Obviously, when I put my head on the pillow at night when I was dreaming and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's always been the UFC. Been go- the the consent series has been going for two weeks now. 
11 contracts have been handed out in 10 fights. Is that kind of a promising sign for you that Dana White's kindness is kind of on the up at the moment and he's more likely to hand out a contract? And uh, what have you made of it so far if you have been watching it? Um, I haven't watched it. I should have watched it, but I haven't been. Uh, you know, I don't even know if there's been any lightweights on, has there? Um, I'm not too sure. I don't think there has, to be honest. But yeah, have you watched any other um, seasons of like last year and the year before that? Not really, mate. No, I like to watch fights and stuff like that, but I haven't really watched the contender series, unfortunately. But um, eh, uh, I'm I'm very selfish and very motivated at the moment. You know, I've got myself in this tunnel of vision at the moment, so um, I'm just keeping my eyes on the prize and really focusing on me at the moment. And uh, you know, that's gonna to show when when I fight. You know, and looking past your fight, let's say you get into the UFC. Is there kind of a goal in terms of for you in the UFC lightweight division? I'm guessing it's going to be the title, but in terms of a dream matchup, is there anybody in the lightweight division or anybody in, in the UFC really that you'd love to kind of fight at one day? Um, <clears throat> I have a lot of idols and stuff like that, and um, it would just be great to to share the octagon with uh, Don Cerrone. He's been a guy I've looked up to since day one. He's probably my favourite fighter of all time. Um, and I just think he's a good all-round character. So whether I fight him or not, it would just be really good to actually meet him and have a beer and shake his hand or get some food with him. <laughs> and can we finally just get a prediction out of you? Uh, I kind of heard it already, but is there a round in mind of when you kind of feel like you're going to get the, the knockout? <laughs> if he runs, it'll be done in one. And if he stands, it'll be done in two. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much and all the best with your journey to Vegas and your, your fight on the 28th. No problem, buddy. Thanks very much.